in the garage today, we're going to be uh, heat wrapping the exhaust manifold with some of this DEI uh, exhaust wrap. This is a titanium based product. Um, the old stuff, back in the old days, they probably would have used uh, asbestos. As a matter of fact, in uh, the original SU carbur installation, carburetor installation, they had a heat shield that actually had asbestos on it. You see there was two little areas where they had asbestos flanges on here. Uh, so anyway, with the, with the installation of the Weber carburetors, we have a different configuration and, and obviously we can't use that heat shield. But we do still need to shield the carburetor from uh, heat transfer from the exhaust manifold. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going we're gonna to wrap it with this titanium stuff. Um, it should also, according to the, the claims of this, this product, actually increase the horsepower. The idea being that by... Um, uh, causing the heat to stay inside the manifold it'll it'll create more of a draft through there and give you more more back pressure so the uh, the exhaust flow is in, is enhanced by trapping the heat on the inside it's supposed to give you a little bit more horsepower we'll see i don't know um anyway so these are the things that you need this stuff here is uh, about 26 dollars at autozone you'll need some metal zip ties because obviously it's going to get hot you can't use regular plastic zip ties. Uh, we're going to use plastic zip ties during the installation just to keep things uh, from unwrapping before we put the metal ones on because you know once you get these on they're in. You can't can't mess with them uh, and you know they're not cheap. So we're going to we're going to use these during the installation but then replace them with these when we're completed with uh, the wrapping. Now inside this uh, this this product, it comes with a, an installation guide right here that kind of gives you some ideas about how much of it that you need to purchase. <laughs> Unfortunately, when you're looking at it in the store, that wrap is on the inside, you can't see it. Um, but I was able to access this online and made a quick calculation. I think that uh, two rolls of this, this is a 15 foot roll, about 30 feet of it, should be able to do uh, the standard um, uh, 77 MGB uh, log type um, exhaust manifold. We don't have, uh, you know, a, a custom exhaust manifold. It just has a standard one from the 70s. It's a cast iron manifold. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that uh, all done with this 15 feet. Um, there's, uh, on, on the, the 77, there's two long stretches that go from the, uh, cylinder one and cylinder four. And then the center one that handles uh, the two in uh, inside manifolds. That one is a shorter, a shorter length. And then it gets to the bottom, at the bottom of the manifold where everything kind of comes together. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, gonna wrap the, the long sections first and then uh, do the center section and then the bottom with, with what's left from uh, each of the, uh, the wraps uh, on the long sections. Uh, so when we get started on this, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to overlap about a quarter of an inch every time that we go around the wrap and start from the top and go to the bottom. Uh, we're going to get it stuck in the top and put it on with a, uh, a temporary uh, zip tie. Go ahead and wrap it down and when we get to the bottom, then we'll, we'll put another temporary on there. Once we get everything all situated and we like the way that it's set, then we'll go ahead and we'll put the, the metal zip ties in there. All right, so let's get started. First off, um, we want to know that we made a difference. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make a quick uh, um, base measurement uh, so we can see how hot it is without the wrap. We'll, then we'll wrap it and we'll take, out, take the car out for another ride and then we'll, we'll see what the differences are in the temperatures. So let's have a look at the, the base temperatures. All right, so I took it for a quick run about uh, 10, 15 miles around the block here. I got the manifold nice and hot. We're going to take some base measurements before we wrap it.
quick explanation as we go along here. What I've done is start at the top. Um, basically, you fold the end over onto itself. I put it on the back side here. You can't see it. Um, and then you run one loop around on that, and it'll grab itself. Now, I put the zip tie on here temporarily because I'm going to go ahead and go down toward the bottom. And once I get this all sorted, then we'll be, um, we'll be able to cut it at the bottom, and then I can clip it on here at the top. Um, so what I did to get to this point, I don't know if you can see, I, uh, I ran a number of wraps. I, I basically ran it dry without looping it, but uh, I ran the, enough of wraps in there so that I can get all the way to the bottom without having to spool it back and forth. Um, and I'm overlapping, I don't know if you can see here, about a quarter of an inch every time. And uh, that will get me to here. See how that works? Um, it's kind of a two-hand thing. Um, now, I'm using bare hands. If you're sensitive to uh, fiberglass, it does feel in my fingers a little bit like I'm touching fiberglass insulation. Um, so it will leave some little fine glassy splinters in your hands if you're not using gloves. Go ahead and use gloves if you're up to it. Um, don't, don't use me as an example, but I'm going to warn you. It does feel a little sensitive. I'm going to scrub it off and it'll be fine, but uh, I got a lot of calluses on my hands. If you have sensitive hands, don't mess with the fiberglass and you won't, you won't be a problem. Put some neoprene gloves on or something and you'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and continue and we'll cut it off. We'll see exactly how much length that we have after this first pipe. All right, so just another little progress uh, uh, cut here. So right there at the where the, the number one cylinder um, manifold crosses into the center, there's a little piece of webbing in there. So what I did was I went around twice to crisscross over the top of that webbing. And I went ahead and decided to do the center one from the bottom going up. As it is, I'm not going to take the carburetor apart, um, and I'm just going to I'm going to run it through and come up through the top. And so uh, by then I had a lot less slack, so it wasn't that much of a problem uh, looping back and forth. And when I got up here to the top section, right in here, um, the two manifolds, the intake and the exhaust manifold, almost touch right there. It was. Uh, it was just as well uh, to, to, to bring it in from the top and then push it down through the, through the bottom. But I got the overlap that I needed. Now what I'm working on is uh, getting it done to the top so that I can uh, go ahead and put that, that zip tie in the middle. What I've done to make it a little bit easier to fish it in and out is I've taken a little bit of shipping tape and put it over the end and then cut a, like a triangle on that to make it easy to fish it through. Uh, that way this stuff doesn't... Um, you know, fray, um, and it gives you uh, a nice rigid, semi-rigid, um, you know, extension to grab it when you're moving with your fingers up inside the, all the little manifold cracks and crevices in there. So I'm going to loop it over twice right there, let, make it go up all, over itself, and then I'm going to put that zip tie in there. All right, I'll let you know when I get to that. All right, so there's the first and the, and the, and the middle wrapped and tied, goes around. That webbing goes back up under. I don't know if you can see from here where the zip tie is, but I doubled it over on itself and then put that zip tie on there. So, last thing here to do is this back pipe and then the, uh, the union where they all come together. And if you're keeping track, after the first pipe and the center pipe, I still have five feet left on that first 15 feet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the second roll, but, um, you know, I think we'll be able to do this whole thing with just uh, two rolls of that, 50 or 30 feet, probably well under 30 feet of that. We'll get a, a positive number, so that maybe we can get an exact size of how long it took. All right, let's get on that next one. So before I get started on this one, I want to point out um, a lesson that I learned on the, fr on the front on the number one cylinder. This little knob and this inside edge right here is thinner than the distance up here at the top. So don't expect to get a zip tie across the top. You're going to have to put your zip tie right in here because it's a thin spot. If you put a zip tie up there, it's going to slide down when you tighten it. That's what I did on that one. As you can see, I had intended, but it, as I tightened it, it went down into that little groove. So this little groove right here is where your zip tie is going to go. With that in mind, 
um, that's where the start of your wrap is going to go. So I'm going to put the start of my wrap on the back side right here and I'm going to wrap one time around and come over that to grab it and then come under. So um, it's just lessons learned from the first one. This is a low spot and the zip tie is going to fall down right in here. So this is where the zip tie is going to go. So we want to make sure that we put our end where someplace where the zip tie is going to be uh, holding it on. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to un unravel and, and pre-wrap a number of wraps. I'm going to count the number of wraps on this side so I know how many to pre-wrap. I'm going to leave a little slack down here and then we're not going to pre-wrap uh, the finished part because that's going to all be kind of as it goes. All right, that worked out pretty well. I was able to pre-wrap about eight rolls on here and then just uh, space them out as I tightened it. You don't even need to have a, um, a, a plastic zip tie up on here. This is a nice tight connection. The, uh, the end is doubled over on itself and it's right in this area right here. When I put that metal zip tie on, it'll go right in this little valley right here. All right, so the next thing we have to do is the last part. You see I zip tied off my progress up to here and this is still loose. Now I have to uh, to wrap this bottom section down here with all of this that I got left over. So definitely, definitely looks like uh, 30 feet will do this job. And you don't need to take the carburetor off. Um, you can get the whole thing done um, with just uh, two 15-foot sections of this. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, and then uh, I'll wrap it up. We'll do a, a, a quick summary. All right, so there you have it the back pipe and the, the union. Um, I wrapped the union quite a bit. As a matter of fact, I used all 15 feet from this top piece and then wrapping the union. The reason why is a lot of these crisscrosses around here where, the, where, the, where it runs. So I just ran, ran it back and forth a few times, just like an ace bandage. Did the same thing over here. Comes through on its final wrap around the bottom. I, I crossed off the top here, so there's not going to be any any kind of uh, airflow anywhere through there. Um, so there you go. That is it. Let's go ahead and crank this thing up and, and try to heat it up and see if we can see a difference. All right, so initial running, a little bit of smoke. Imagine there might be something on the cloth that is uh, burning off. I don't know if that's normal, we're going to check it out. A little bit of smoke. Alright, so after a good long run, quite a bit more smoke. I don't know if you can see that. Quite a lot of smoke coming off of it. But the idea was to get a hot. So there we go. Let's get the, uh, the thermometer on this. All right, so I took it out for another quick run. Got everything all burnt off. There's no more smoke. The uh, I can tell you, aside from the measurement, just feeling the carburetor, it is it's it's warm, but it is uh, certainly not nearly as hot as it was before. Um, taking measurements, you know, it's at or around 110, 120. I don't think that... I don't think it could be nearly the issue that I was having before. And the other thing is, this uh, fuel filter, significantly um, cooler than it was before. So I think we can call that a, a positive and it has accomplished what we're looking for. The, the temperature of the actual uh, exhaust manifold has not really changed. But I can tell you by holding my hand, the radiant heat, the heat that's coming off of it, is definitely reduced. So uh, I think that that's, uh, that's a really great product, so I'm happy to have it on my car. That's all I got for you.